Good evening and welcome to Calvin Presbyterian Church on Christmas Eve. We are glad you're joining us this evening. My thanks to all those who are leading in worship today, to Mark Bilyeu, our director of music, to Gigi Stronsek, our singer. The Ray family are our candle lighters, Chelsea and Walter and Lucille, and with help from the children's grandfather from Jim Rettinger. And our readers this evening are Jay Gagnier, Stephanie Coe, Chelsea Ray, and Jim Rettinger. And finally, thanks to Joel Wenz, our videographer. For those who love the traditions of Christmas, including the usual service of lessons and carols that we usually have on Christmas Eve, this service will feel a bit different. But of course, this year, everything is different. We still will hear about the birth of Christ from the Gospels and many of our beloved Christmas carols. We're even using some audio recordings from previous Christmas services, so you'll hear, hear the congregation and the choir singing. There are some very different things this year, like several reflections from our youth members and as they interpret the nativity story. Let us worship God.
Tonight is the day we have been preparing for during the Advent season. We light the four candles that remind us of our preparations of Advent. A candle burns, the markers of our Advent journey. Tonight, we light the Christ candle. A candle burns brightly, the sign of God's presence. We light this candle for the newborn Christ, reawakening hope and faith with the word of God made flesh to dwell among us. God amongst us, born as one of us, may we live in the light of your presence, the light who gives life to all. Ow. Oh, yes. Uh, I could do it. Mom. Okay. Dada. Ready? Dada. Dada. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. May we always welcome him in our community, our homes, and lives. Be with us in our worship as we celebrate his coming to the world. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the newborn king, we pray. Amen. My favorite Christmas carol is Once in Royal David's City. I remember as a child listening to this carol and it always brought tears to my mom's eyes as she remembered growing up in England and how beautiful this carol was. Back in the 50s, it was not a carol that we heard all the time. So it was an unusual one as well. Once in Royal David's City was first published as a poem in 1848 in Ireland. It was put to music as a hymn a year later in 1849 and has opened the Festival of Nine Carols at King's College in Cambridge every year since 1919. The first verse is always the same, but the remaining verses change each year as there are six verses and only four are sung. This year, due to the pandemic, even the Festival of Nine Carols in Cambridge will be conducted with no one in the pews. I hope you enjoy this Christmas Eve service and Merry Christmas to all.
Please listen to the opening reading. Come and see, light to splinter darkness, hope to lift the soul, peace to ring the changes, grace resounds for all. Night the time for birthing, stars to guide us on, angels' voices singing, joining with our song. Come and see the newborn, come with newfound joy. Come for heaven's rejoicing, Mary's infant boy. Psalm 96, O sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name, tell of God's salvation day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and marvels among all his people. Worship the Lord in holy splendor, tremble before the Lord all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. 
Let the field exult and everything in it. The trees of the forest shall sing for joy before the Lord, who is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. This is a reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 3a, 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Merry Christmas. My name is Stephanie Ko, and I'd like to share my favorite Christmas song with you, Joy to the World. One of my fondest memories is on Christmas Eve, sitting next to my grandma in church and her belting out the tunes. It always uh, puts a smile on my face when we sing that song on Christmas Eve. Uh, wishing you a happy and healthy uh, Christmas and New Year. Hi everyone. I wanted to let you all know my favorite part of the holiday and my favorite song is definitely Silent Night because growing up, Steph and I would go to our candlelit service on Christmas Eve with all of our family. And at the end, all the lights would turn off. We would all light our candles and sing Silent Night. And it was funny because one of my cousins always spilled its wax on me. So it was a running joke in our family. So hope everyone's staying healthy and safe. Happy holidays. This scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 23, 26 through 33. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. This reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
This is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. This scripture reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at the shepherds, what they told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told them.
Christmas 2020. I remember as the year began thinking that was such an auspicious number, 2020. I wondered what I could do to make it feel different. Little did any of us know back in January what was in store for us this year. What does Christmas mean to us this year that has been like no other that we have ever lived through? For most of us, I suspect Christmas will feel different without many of the traditions that we usually follow or harder yet without the gatherings with family and friends that we love. There are those people considering how to celebrate Christmas who have lived through great loss this year, loss of jobs, loss of income and savings, and worse yet, loss of loved ones. Throughout December, I've been asking Calvin church folk about their favorite Christmas carol. What I heard overwhelmingly was that people loved being here in this sanctuary, singing together on Christmas Eve. It's a sadness, of course, not to be together this year. By the way, any guess on what was the favorite carol that I heard? Without a doubt, it was Silent Night. Every year when we gather for worship on Christmas Eve, we hear the story of Christ's birth, listening to the same scripture passages each year. We may sing different carols, but every year our service, like many churches across this country, ends with the singing of Silent Night. Almost everything has been different this year. What does Christmas mean to us? The scripture we read from the Bible are the same, but we are different people. Our world is much different. I think this year there have been a lot of connection points with the story of Christ's birth. Christ was born into a world where there were many difficulties. Luke's gospel tells us also that Jesus was born in the year when a census was being taken. Those of us in the U.S. may remember that in the midst of everything else that was happening this year, we too were counted in a census. There are those words of the angels, be not afraid. Fear has been real and a more present reality through this past year. Another thing that resonates with me this year are the words of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This year has felt dark in so many ways. We in the Northern Hemisphere are, of course, in the darkest days of winter. The past month in our region has brought actually only a dusting of snow, but so many days have been cloudy with no glimpse of the sun. It has felt literally and figuratively dark this month. There's a short phrase in the gospel passage about Christ's birth that's easy to miss says that the shepherds return to their lives, glorifying and praising God. Yes, the shepherds returned back to their fields, back to those smelly, restless sheep that were in their charge. But they were not the same people. They had seen the light of God's presence in the star hanging above the manger, and in the light of God's presence, that was in the promise of a newborn child, the light of the world. Yes, they went back to life as usual, but they went back singing God's praises, knowing that they had seen God. We will go forward from this season of Christmas and not much may feel different. Sure, there's the promise of a vaccine and 
the time when herd immunity will allow us to return to our normal lives, a wonderful promise to be sure. But I also wonder if we won't carry with us closely the memories of this past year, the good as well as the many difficult parts. We have sung about Emmanuel, God with us in these dark days leading up to Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. In the midst of all that is troubling us, in the midst of our own fears and our needs, our anxieties and sadness, we are told that we are not alone. The hope of the promises of God live with us still. We too can be like the shepherds and return to our lives in a new way, glorifying and praising God, touched by the light of God's love and grace. Amen and amen.
While we are not here in person to give our offerings to God, there is still an opportunity to do so online, responding to the light of God's presence, guiding our way. Let us turn to God in prayer. God of glory, by your grace, a child has been born for us. A son is given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and in his name we pray. Wonderful Counselor, we pray for wisdom for leaders of this nation and throughout the world, that they use their power to serve all in need and to serve with justice. Mighty God, we pray for the church Christ came to build so we all can come to know the story of your grace. Multiply and increase our joy as we share your blessings and your message with a world of need. Everlasting Father, we pray for families, friends, and loved ones, especially any who walk in darkness, that they come to experience your great light, your saving love. We pray for all those needing healing, for those needing hope, for those needing comfort. Prince of Peace, we pray for an end to violence and warfare, suffering and hunger. We pray for the places on earth longing for peace this night. O oh God, may your authority continue to grow until there is endless peace throughout the earth. Loving God, as you entered the world so long ago, enter our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of Christ's presence. Help us receive him as our Redeemer. Fill us with your peace so that we may live with the joy of this day. All these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
John's gospel begins with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Yeah. Go 
into the night carrying the light of Christ with you. May his peace come into your heart as it fills the world with hope. May the grace of God and the love of Christ born among us and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, opening hearts and lives to hope and joy, be with us this night, this Christmas time, and forevermore. Amen.